Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Series. You want to play the saxophone, huh? My name is Ed Kaye. I've been playing for about 20 years. I started in junior high school and uh, have gone on to become a professional player, and it's my pleasure to help you start on this wonderful journey of music. Today we're going to cover some basic things. We're going to cover everything from when you first get your saxophone, how you take it out of the case, how you put it together, how you hold it, how we breathe, how we make an embouchure, how we produce a tone. We're going to learn three notes. So hold on, because here we go. Step one. I have a brand new instrument today. So we're going to open the case, and we're going to take it out. Always be careful of your location with the case and with the instrument. The closer you are to the ground, the better. Never drop these. I try to treat my instruments as if they were a small child. They are as important to me as anything else in my life, so I take very good care of them. You should do the same. Whether you're renting or buying, doesn't matter. They're really works of art. So today I have a new instrument. I'm going to take it out of the case. I usually will grab it by the bell this way, just to make sure that I don't hold on to these rods and keys and bend anything, especially if you grip on very tightly. As you see, I have a neck strap on already. I should have probably put this, but this will come in the case. And you just strap the saxophone on this way, and it will go around your neck this way. The, the neck strap will support the saxophone. I left this instrument as brand new, and most brand new instruments have corks on them to hold the keys in place. Of course, the instrument won't play this way, so we have to take these corks off, and I'm going to proceed to do that. They will be on these large keys down here. There are these little corks right here. And there are many of them all through the saxophone. If you have a pencil or if you have a screwdriver, or if you're, if you're in band and your band director might have one, we will talk about this a little later, but I always have a set of screwdrivers in my case for emergencies and for ma basic maintenance. There's another cork right there, which I proceeded to drop on the floor. There is one more cork back here, which is a little more difficult to get at. And once I move this, I should have a functioning saxophone. You try to be very gentle with this, as you can tell I'm holding this instrument in all kinds of positions, but I have it held around my neck by my neck strap, and therefore will not drop it. I think I now have all of the corks loosened on this instrument. Again, this will only really affect you if you have a brand new instrument and this is the first time that you are using it. So now I am ready to remove the neck protector. There's a little screw up here, you will see. I will loosen this, I will turn it towards me, and I will remove this little black cap that is here. It just protects the rim of the saxophone so it doesn't get dented or bent. And you will put this back in your case. You will always keep this. You'll need it every time you put it away. The next step will be the neck. This is the neck of the saxophone. Again, since this is the first time I'm using it, if you're the first time you're using it, or if you haven't played in a few days, you might need to grease the cork. But this is the neck piece. I hold it this way. I try not to... Don't hold it this way. You hold it gently with your fingers. And you, using a turning motion, back and forth, back and forth, slowly, without exerting any pressure, you put the neck piece in. Line up the octave key this way so it's kind of straight at you. And turn the screw a few times until it's snug. It doesn't have to be real tight. So now we have the basic saxophone put together. It comes in these two parts, the main body and the neck. You will see up here a cork. And this is made out of exactly that. It's made out of cork. And when you first get it, it will be very dry. This is where the mouthpiece rests. I have in my case a mouthpiece. And this is a very standard stock Sea Star mouthpiece. This mouthpiece will fit on this neck. When you first try to put it on the very first time, the cork is going to be expanded. So you're going to have to, it's going to take a second. The first thing we need to do is we need to get some cork grease. The cork grease will come in either a little square canister this way, or it will come in a round tube, sort of like chapstick, or it might come in a little can that you squeeze. There are many types of it. But just ask for cork grease. It should come in the case. What you will do here is put your finger in here, 
and get some grease, not a lot, just a little bit, and we will put grease all over this cork so that the mouthpiece has something on which to slide. Otherwise, what will happen is you will rip the cork right off and you'll have to run to the repairman and you won't be able to play the saxophone for a few days so or a few hours, whichever the case may be. And we want to start playing as soon as possible. I take my mouthpiece. Again, I hold it this way in my hand. I don't do this. I just grab it with my fingers. Please make sure that you don't drop this. You don't drop any of this stuff because once it, once it chips or breaks or cracks, you have to buy a new one, basically, in the case of this. And in the case of the saxophone, you don't want to do that. Now, I will put the mouthpiece on here, and I will take my fingers and use this as a pressure point. Not the keys, not the body. I don't force it towards me. I'm letting it rest on my neck strap. I use this point right here, and I will turn the mouthpiece and put, just push it down a little ways. You will find in your case a reed. Usually it comes in this form, a little case like this. You will open the case and uh, for about a minute or so you're going to take some saliva and put it in your mouth and put this reed in your mouth and just sort of let it soak in the saliva. If you don't like that approach, there's a different approach and something that I like to do and that is to take just a cup of water, not too full, and put it in a microwave for about 30 seconds so the water is warm. It's probably about the same temperature as your saliva. And just put the reed in there and let it rest for about 30 seconds. Reeds have to be wet in order to play. In order for them to vibrate correctly, they need to be wet. What I have learned, because I live in Florida, I don't know where most of you are, but here it's always very hot. I have taken a jar, just a peanut butter jar, any jar that doesn't leak, and I fill it with a little bit of mouthwash, very little bit, and I put reeds in there, and they stay wet almost all the time. They don't get waterlogged, I don't put a lot of it, just very little at the bottom of this jar, and I will keep the reeds in that way. That way I don't have to always be sticking them in my mouth. I feel like I'm at the doctor's office saying, ah. So I don't like to do that, and therefore I keep them wet. I will take my reed out, so whether you have had it soaking in your mouth, or whether you have had it in a cup in the microwave and let it sit for a minute or two, or whether you're a little more advanced and now you're using a, a reed jar of some type, take the reed and you can suck off any extra water that's on it, or mouthwash. And I'll do this like all saxophone players do. Most of the time we spend, when we're doing this, we talk with our mouse, with a reed in our mouth. You have a mouthpiece, a mouthpiece cap, and this apparatus, which is called a ligature. Ligatures come in all kinds of varieties. Some are dark, some are one screw, some are two screws. They all serve the same purpose. They hold our reed in place. What I want to emphasize here is that some people teach that you put the reed on the mouthpiece and then you place the ligature over that. I don't like to do that for two reasons. Inevitably, you will chip the reed or the mouthpiece when you do this. So what I prefer to do is to hold the ligature this way and I take it at this angle. I, I put the ligature against the mouthpiece this way and then over the top so it doesn't touch the tip of the mouthpiece. The ligature is already in place. These screws I will loosen or tighten depending on what I need to do with this reed. I will take the reed, the flat side of the reed goes against the mouthpiece, the side with the writing on it or the side that's cut and is a little has a little ridge will be facing you. You will take the reed and slide it down. If the ligature is too tight, just loosen it so that the reed goes down. And now I will take the ligature, I mean I will take the reed and press it against the edge of the mouthpiece. This way. Lower the ligature so it's below the cut of the reed, the little cut of the reed here. And then I will just tighten the two screws. Sometimes we get ligatures that aren't very good and they'll be loose and they'll move around and the reed will move. If that's the case, you may need to go back to the music store and ask for a little better ligature. Or maybe sometimes you can put a piece of paper up here to make it a little tighter. Any of those things. But the, it should move. Once it's in place, it should be there for good and the reed should not move around. I think basically 
we have that together. The other option for you is to do the part with the mouthpiece first and then put your saxophone together. If you'd like, I'll demonstrate that for you very quickly. I have a wet reed. I have a mouthpiece which I hold in this hand, depending on whether you're left or right-handed. And I have the ligature. I place the ligature against the side, pop it over this way, loosen the screw so the reed can fit down. I will take the reed flat side against the mouthpiece and move the reed down until it's when you press it down with your thumb you should see the black part of the mouthpiece just over the top of the reed I hope you can see that here's the reed without my finger I take my thumb I press down do that put the ligature below the cut of the reed which is this right here sorry here's the cut of the reed I take the ligature and I squeeze those two screws now I have it in place now I have my reed and my mouthpiece ready to go so my next step is to take the saxophone out 